I'm starting to get nervous about raising a son in today's world. So how was your relationship with your dad? My dad traveled a lot. So my dad sold, my dad was a salesman and sold feed. Mm-hmm. And he was always on the road. So, you know, my dad, my dad was <clears throat> mainly with me on the weekends. And, you know, I just respected the heck out of him. I, I learned from my dad more from watching him than anything else. So that yeah. was how I, you know, that's how I grew up. I grew up watching my dad and learned how to hopefully become a man just from watching him. And I, I think he was a great role model in that way. He, you know, he always came through. He always did what he said he was going to do. Um, and hopefully it worked with me. Well, you know, for me, <clears throat> my dad was not what I would call a good role model. <laughs> it was not a good parental legacy passed on uh, because he was a really bad alcoholic my entire life until like my last two years when he kind of got sober and went back to the Dallas Theological Seminary and got his Master's of Divinity and all that. But the entire time I was growing up, he was a raging alcoholic. And so as I was growing up, there was none of this hunting, fishing, camping, not one day in my life did I ever spend in the woods with my dad or at a stream fishing or hunting or anything like that. So when I had boys, I had to make a decision about, okay, look, I can't just expose them to what I know because my dad didn't expose me to any of that stuff. So I had to make a conscious decision that I was going to expose them to everything and let them pick what they really liked. I mean, from a very early age, because seriously, I never spent one minute with my dad fishing. So I resolved to take both of my boys fishing. I took both of my boys hunting. I took both of my boys camping. I took, I mean, I just did everything with them that was not done with me. And not very well, because I (laughs) didn't know how to do it. Uh, But I thought, I owe it to them to expose it to them so they can choose what they want to do. I'll tell you something I did with Jordan that I thought was probably, looking back, the, the smartest thing I ever did with him. He asked me one year, what do you want for Christmas? And um, I said, well, I don't know. And he said, well, you're hard to buy for, because come on. He said, let's face it. During the year, if you want something, you just get it or send somebody to get it. And so there's nothing you don't have that you want. And I said, all right, here's the deal. I want you to give me one hour a week dedicated for me to talk about anything I want with you for an hour a week. He said, done. I said, no, no, I want you to sleep on this because I'm talking about 52 hours and I'm gonna hold you to it. So you need to think about whether you really wanna make that commitment or whether you wanna go buy something or whatever. How old was he? Uh, uh, He was a sophomore. Okay, time is precious for a sophomore. Yes, and he came back the next day and said, all right, I've thought about it, I'll do it. And we probably did 38, hours probably 40 hours something like that and he would miss or I would miss but we did the vast majority of it and I didn't sit down like this and say all right school time we would do it walking around the neighborhood or shooting baskets or something like that but I spent that time talking to him about car insurance how to change the oil changing a tire on a car uh, taxes on a house, uh, checking account, certificates of deposit, uh, property taxes that schools use, uh, things that you just don't, kids don't know about mm-hmm. anymore. Um, things he just didn't know about. I'd ask him questions like, why, do you, why is it more expensive to insure a Corvette than a four-door Ford? and that costs the same to buy? Well, I don't know. 
Well, then we talk about, well, this is faster. It's a two-seater. <laughs> people race around more. And so we went through all of that, and he really learned a lot of things that he'll tell you today that he uses in life. That so was what, one of the best things I ever did. I think it starts with this. Recognizing you're not going to be the only voice in your child's ear, so you need to make damn sure you're the best voice in your child's ear. Because it doesn't matter what stage of life, they're going to be getting a lot of information from a lot of different people. You need to make sure you're the best source of information, which means if you're judgmental, and they can't tell you anything for fear of getting in trouble or fear of getting judged, then they're not going to talk to you about very much. If you're the principal, if mm -hmm. you're the uh, authority figure, they're not going to come to you and you're going to be the last to know. And I always tell parents, you need to talk to your kids about things that don't matter so you're ready to talk to them about things that do matter. I told my kids, you think for yourself. And if an adult's telling you something that doesn't fit in your ear right, it, it doesn't seem right, you tell them to kiss your ass. And if you get in it, and if you're wrong, if it was an okay <laughs> thing to do and it was an okay person to tell you, I got your back. I'll cover you. And do not use that to be disrespectful or to get away with something or you're going to have me to deal with but we didn't tell our children to mind adults we said think for yourself because if you've got some adult telling hey get in the car do this to, no I, I think it's it, I, I think it's bad decision for people to tell their children to mind adults respect your adults and mind them you should respect everyone but you should think for yourself